everyone. This is Melissa Gay, the artist guest of honor at Liberty Con 2022. Yay! And uh, I can't be there in person, as you know, so I am recording these in advance to get everyone excited about being at Liberty Con. Yay! Uh, one of my favorite parts of Liberty Con is getting to participate in the Charity Art Jam, where a bunch of artists get together and paint together or, you know, draw whatever your art might be. And then it gets auctioned off at the charity auction and we get to talk and joke around and it's super fun. Now I'm uh, not there, so I'm doing it all by myself. So <laughs> this is going to be weird, but uh, I'm just going to pretend that I'm there with you talking and joking around. So, you know, yay. Uh, since I am doing this by myself and part of the benefit of being with a group of people is like you hear the theme and you go, ah, I have to paint what? And then you're talking to each other. So your, your internal critic kind of shuts off and you just do the thing and it's cool. And uh, this time I'm in my head by myself. You know, I don't have uh, anything to tell my internal critic to shut up. So uh, I'm just gonna sort of power through this in uh, a way that makes sense to my art brain. <laughs> And uh, if you have any questions, I guess you can just email me at gay.melissa.com at wait at gmail.com. I don't know what I'm saying. Never mind. It's uh, gay.melissa at gmail.com. Always willing to talk about art. Art is awesome. So uh, I'm going to start this normally at a, a convention. I would start a demo with a blank canvas so you could see the whole process from start to finish. But that all kind of depends on how much time I have to do these demos. Sometimes I like to start with the background already in progress. And uh, since I'm painting in my own studio, I have a bunch of these backgrounds because I paint a lot of space art. And so if I have nothing to do, I will often just take a board or two boards and just sort of spatter a bunch of stars on it. Just, just put a color down. Just spatter some stars on. Just make a shape something it's uh you know it's fun it's cool and um it gets the creative process rolling and you have a bunch of stuff in your studio ready to go so how cool is that i'm going to show you a trick sometimes well i paint with a lot of uh acrylic glazes obviously and so when these dry they dry to a glossy surface. And the problem with glossy surfaces is um, adhesion. You know, uh, gloss layers don't necessarily like to stick to gloss layers. So I take 150 grit sandpaper and I will just sort of, you know, how does that sound on the mic? <laughs> I'll just sort of give my, uh, my painting uh, a rough going over before I apply another layer of something. So uh, that's that's cool. I just have these two sitting out because they were the first two I grabbed. You know, uh, I'm only supposed to be doing one painting for the charity art jam. I might do two. Sometimes if I'm uh, artistically blocked, it's a good thing to have multiple uh, surfaces sitting around. That way you just like, um, I don't really know what to do with this one. I'm gonna move over to this one and do something. It's cool. It keeps your uh, creative juices flowing and you don't have to sort of pause your workflow. So that's, that's an old freelancer's trick for you. Now, uh, I've got a whole bunch of brushes and tools set out. This little cool thing is a uh, paint cup with a silicone bottom so that you can wipe your brushes off. That's super cool. Someone gave that to me and it was awesome. So I've got a palette here. I've just sort of squoze out a bunch of different colors. 
this isn't the most organized palette, but I'm sort of trying to emulate the charity art jam feel because, uh, you know, you got that time pressure hanging over you and uh, the last thing you're going to be is organized. So um, I can see this one dripping. So I'm just going to point out um, this is titanium white. Uh, this is light portrait pink. That is uh, burnt umber, uh, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, Indian yellow, pyrrol red, that's thalo turquoise. That is the runny one is Payne's gray. That is ultramarine blue. And that is dioxazine purple, which I have squirted out way too much of. If I put that on my canvas, it would cover the whole entire thing with purple. So some of these colors are more potent than others as far as pigmenting goes. And uh, others are there to sort of dull down the pigment so uh, you can appreciate when a bright color pops out. So I'm just going to go for it now. Uh, mm, my brush isn't clean. That's exciting. So that'll add another dimension to the painting. Uh, I'm going to start with this one because uh, I kind of have an idea. I'm going to scooch this over so I think it shows up on the camera a bit more. It's a star field uh, done mainly with Payne's gray and um, sort of a portrait pink mixture that I think I did for another painting. And we've got this circle, kind of looks like an eclipsed heavenly body of some sort. So I think since the theme is um, evolved reptiles or birds, I think we're going to, I'm just going to paint sort of a like a phoenix shape coming out of this. It's gonna, it's gonna be hatching. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be hatching it from this egg, it, it, which is a celestial orb. So that's my concept. That's my concept and I'm sticking to it. If I had a reference photo, I could do this in a much more natural looking way. This is gonna look a bit uh, uh, made up nursery school egg hatching I'm afraid but that's okay because we're just gonna we're just gonna make this explode out now what I'm doing is I've got this light portrait pink which is a great uh, color for just sort of laying down a shape because it's not very intense it is low chroma enough that it's going to dull down any pure tone that it's mixed with uh, and it's gonna stay on the board but it's it's not a very intense uh, pigment so that it's easy to cover once you've got stuff on it. So anyway, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a cool shape because uh, that's what, you know, phoenixes are all about, is about the fire and the coolness of the shape. So I'm gonna just sort of, let's see, boo! Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's, that's my base shape is sort of this uh, question mark Archimedes spiral type thing. So uh, now I'm going to take that and I'm going to build on it by adding some other shapes. We're going to have uh, sort of fiery wings coming out of it. Let's see. Hold on. Let's let's paint some fire feathers. Um, and this is what I call a paint sketch. I am literally just sketching out the thing. And how big and explosive do we want these wings to be? I think I'm going to, I'm going to have them sort of coalescing in the void of space. Like it's not quite fully there yet. You know, it's, it's hatching. It's sort of, it's taking its final form. Ah, super cool. So this phoenix is definitely going to be over 9,000. And let's see. Okay, I think, I think I'm going somewhere with this. I think this is going to be actually kind of cool. So I can sort of see the shape of the beak. And I don't like that line there. Acrylic is great. You can just sort of remove it with anything <laughs> before it's dry. Once it's dry, it's not going anywhere. So let's kind of, I'm going to draw a really cool eye, I think. 
and you know once we have the shape drawn we can decide what uh what colors that's the word what colors to put on it how about that my hand is shaking a lot i've had a lot of coffee today <laughs> Everyone learn from my bad example. <laughs> so um, now I'm going to, now that I've got this sort of shape sketched in, I'm going to do what I maybe should have done to begin with and start with a bigger brush because, oh, there we go. That is like a, a one inch hardware store brush. Honestly, they're great. I use them for a lot of different things from gessoing canvases to putting big shapes on. And if you're working with a large canvas, for goodness sake, work with larger brushes because, you know, therein lies madness. I am not a pointillist. I am a person that likes large brushes. See, and look at that. It's kind of that rough line kind of looks cool and spacey in a way. I think I like that a lot, actually. I may not um, mess with that too much because sometimes part of the beauty of a painting is in that mark making that looks spontaneous and not contrived and overthought. And that's part of why I like these art jam pieces is because you really just see the artist thinking on the canvas or on the paper uh, and that's what I think makes them really unique and I am glad that so many conventions do this nowadays because it's really cool and plus as an artist for me personally it really helps my creative mind flourish because if you're just forced to do something to just put things down and you're not overthinking it that really helps sort of unblock the creative channels so i'm going to unblock some feathers now i guess we're gonna do some mm, and i liked this brush back when it had uh more gunk on it actually because it was sort of uh, separated and made interesting feathers so i'm going to sort of flip it on its side. That's a great thing you can do with brushes is flip them over if you don't like what they're doing. And yeah, there we go. We'll just, there we go. See, it's sort of coruscating off into the, into the void of space. All right, there we go. Oh, and that. How does that look? See, this is great because I have a, a mirror right in front of me, you guys, and uh, that actually helps me see what I've done. Uh, a lot of times artists will work with mirrors or if you're working digitally, you can just uh, flip the canvas digitally and it helps you kind of keep an eye on your composition. So that's what I'm doing here, keeping an eye on my composition. And uh, that is really cool and I think I am going to move on to a different part of this painting actually I might actually it's gonna be my word for the day I think I might do I want to put stuff in there I might put some like red weird speckles to see about like sort of just just putting some detail into that uh, planetary egg that we've got going. And uh, I've got some of this, um, some of that pyrrole red and I've mixed it with a little bit of that Payne's gray. And now I'm just, I'm just poking it in there and you can't really see it on the camera right now, but you will when it's done because it's, um, it's more visible to my eye than it is to the camera's eye, which is sort of overexposing things a lot. <laughs> but I can't help that because I don't know very much about my camera, unfortunately. So uh, that looks interesting. I'm gonna keep that right here. Now that I have broken out this red, 
I kind of like it. So I think I might put some red underneath that cool sweeping line that I have up top. First though, let the camera focus. I'm going to take some of that portrait pink and put it on my brush so that the red will show up more against that Payne's gray background. So whenever you're, I mean, it's just like painting a house. Whenever you put down a red, you have to prime it because for some reason, red just doesn't want to paint opaquely. So this, we're not exactly priming it but we're just mixing it on the canvas as we go, a board actually. Um, it's uh, a hard board. And uh, to me, that gives a more sort of vital, interesting, uh, alive look when you, when you mix on the surface. And ooh, look at that. That is so freaking cool. Look, that phoenix is just, it's, is it a phoenix or is it a dragon? I don't know. It's, it's, outer space. It can be whatever it wants. So, uh, you know, I think we're straddling the line of uh, what it means for a reptile, for a space reptile to evolve into a space bird. <laughs> oh no, I did the wrong thing. Okay, well, that's okay. I, I dipped my brush in the wrong thing. That's okay, because sometimes when you do that, it's just going to add an extra little dimension. You know, sometimes when uh, color is too pure, uh, and I can't believe I'm saying this because I love pure colors. Uh, I use a lot of them. Uh, but sometimes when a color is too pure, it loses its impact. And uh, especially when it's next to a whole bunch of other pure colors. So sometimes when you muddy up that color a little bit, like I'm doing with this kind of nasty Payne's gray here and this uh, lovely portrait pink and and that pyrrole red. I don't know why I'm showing you that. That means nothing probably. <laughs> but <laughs> for anyone who cares, this is what my palette looks like. <laughs> and uh, so we're just going to look. I'm adding feathers. Oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm adding feathers. See, sometimes you just get going. And you don't even know where it's going. Oops, I unattached my thing. Sometimes you don't even know where it's going, but uh, in the journey, you get there. That's part of my favorite thing about uh, these timed paintings. It just, you see where the journey takes you. It's so cool. I love it. And, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so. I'm going to sort of add some feathers here. Uh, part of the process with acrylics is knowing when to blend and when to let it dry and layer over it. Because if you catch it at the wrong moment, it is going to get goopy and disgusting and leave weird whole textures in your piece. So nobody wants that unless you like it. I have to qualify everything in art with that statement. <laughs> Do what you like. <laughs> and we're just gonna, phew, it's gonna be all weird and cool. Okay, see I don't even care about that one looking like feathers. It's just gonna be, it's just gonna be what it's gonna be. I might do that over here too now that I've gotten going on it. Yeah, just like, ooh, yeah, okay, so that's really red. The question is, do I want to keep it really red? Because I'm going to eventually put a bunch of these bright pure colors on. But how much do I want on there as we're layering up? That's That I don't know. And see that, I definitely don't want to be too thick. I want that line to look like it's... Um, coming towards us, you know, it's coming out of the egg and whoa, up towards, up into outer space and up towards us. So there we go. Oh, look at that. That's cool. I like that. So uh, we're going to put in these shapes and uh, I'll, you know, I'll tell you one thing, a color that you might associate with phoenixes that 
I have not touched yet. And you saw it on my palette, and that is good old cadmium yellow. What am I doing with that, huh? Well, I'll tell you. I don't like to put cadmium yellow on too early in the process because that is one of the most eye-catching colors. And I find that if you're painting a fiery thing, if you paint sort of the darks and the reds down first and then add those yellows uh, toward the end, it, it ends up looking more flamey, more incendiary. And uh, that, to me, makes a more satisfying uh, piece of fiery artwork. See, I'm still leaving some of that initial stroke that you can see through, but it's just, um, you know, like when you're looking at a, at a photo of a galaxy or something, and you can kind of see through the layers into the different layers of stars. Uh, I like to paint stuff like that, that rewards multiple viewings where you can see through the layers and go, oh, wow, look at all those <laughs> layers. <laughs> So uh, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to line that C with red. And you know, when you're like looking at a, a flame or, you know, a bright thing, you can kind of see this red aura around it. And then all the, uh, the yellows and stuff are in the middle like a candle flame, I'm going to put sort of the red aura around here. And I'm going to have that red go off into the Payne's gray, sort of fade off into that Payne's gray. And I might have to repaint some of that Payne's gray. It looks like I might. Or I could just wipe it off with this. You know, that's, that's the benefit also of having uh, a prepared surface for your art jam piece is um, if I were painting on a regular board, the gesso of that board would be inclined to absorb some of that acrylic and it would be less easy to wipe away. But in this case, uh, I have that sort of slick surface already on there. So it's going to let me move that paint around a little. So, and this isn't going to be perfect because it's just a, uh, like an hour, two hour piece. So I'm just going to suggest some things. It's going to be more impressionistic, you know, and hopefully you'll get to see the finished piece at the art jam, not the art jam. It might be at the art jam, not sure. It will definitely be at the charity auction. So uh, there you go. Oh yeah, you know what? I'm just going to fill that in because look at that. That's cool. And then I can go back over that with the, um, with the pale colors if I, if I feel like it. And I really like the way that has sort of uh, echoed in the in the star field here. These little dots that that I made through spattering it when I prepared the surface. It's it's looking pretty cool. Let me just show you real quick what what I have painted. There we go. See that is really cool. It looks neat on camera. And what I'm going to do is let that dry a little bit before I go in with the yellow, because that, that kind of looks a little yellow on camera, but it's not. <laughs> it's not at all. <laughs> it's, it's basically peach and red. <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, again, let that dry so that it doesn't look, um, so that, um, so here's the thing. 
I'll, I'll just I'll try to show you because that it's kind of cool. Acrylic, when you put it down, has a certain set of plastic properties. And if you let that dry for a while, it will be plastic. But if you um, put other acrylic over it while it's drying, you see, trying to do a contrasting color, and then just wipe it up. <laughs> that is gone. See, acrylic will um, act as a solvent for itself while it's still drying. So that is uh, something to be aware of <laughs> if you are an artist who works with acrylic paint. <laughs> so uh, I don't want to uh, put some yellow down and then be smearing it around with a brush and have it pull that red up or pull that portrait pink up. So um, that's why uh, for just the safety of my paint sketch here, I'm just going to leave it for a few minutes. And ideally, I should leave it for a couple of hours because acrylic painted on a slick surface behaves differently from acrylic painted on a porous surface. So anyway, while we're just going to give that a couple minutes to dry, I'm going to shift over to this canvas and do something different. I maybe want to just see I've, I'm uh, cadmium yellow frustrated now because I haven't been able to put it on this one yet. So I'm going to take this and my dirty, filthy brush. And uh, I'm going to put more cad yellow on my palette so that I will still have the stuff that I allocated for this painting. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to mix it with some white because um, cad yellow is, it's fairly, I don't know, it's, it's not quite opaque. It's not quite transparent. You just have to, it's its own animal. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to uh, just sort of, I don't know, I had this image of a little, I've been thinking a lot about uh, Archaeopteryx, and I don't know why, but um, I had the uh, image of a little Archaeopteryx gazing at the stars, so I'm going to just sort of sketch that in and uh, put it like little, little scales here. They have really big eyes, so I'm going to leave a big eye space. Oh, it's so cute. And maybe just pull this this way for the beak. I think they had beaks. Did they have beaks or did they? I can't remember where the sort of theropods diverged into bird beaks and all that good stuff. So I'm just going to sort of and remember, this is just a fun little canvas that I'm using to fill my time when, when that one dries. And, you know, when we're not worried about our, uh, I guess, end result, <laughs> you can just play a bit more. And I'm going to just play. Is it a child? I don't know. Maybe. It's going to be looking at the stars. I've always seen uh, them as depicted with sort of red eyes, which is cool, you know, but I'm also going to sort of mix it in with some of this Payne's gray to have a little bit of contrast, not just uh, chromatic contrast, but also just the values, you know, the darks and lights. We're going to sort of have that. We're going to have a little bit of red down here to just sort of 
uh, I don't know, retinal reflection, something, something. And uh, I do want that blue to come through because it's going to be reflecting the sky. And you're going to, did I get cadmium on me? Yeah, a little bit. It's fake cadmium. I'm using, um, anytime you see a paint that says hue, like cadmium yellow hue, it means it is fake cadmium pigment. It's uh, an RLI dye. Uh, that's not real cadmium, so it's um, much less toxic, and uh, I need that because I tend to stick my fingers onto my paintings quite a lot. <laughs> so we're getting little, little Archaeopteryx child. Oh, look. She wants to go to the stars. I can tell. Let's see, I'm going to put a little bit of, a little bit of, a little bit of highlight there. Oh, so sweet. Here we go. Mm. All right. <laughs> oh, I love her. Okay. I've decided it's a her. She needs a name. There you go. Oh, <laughs> well, that was really sweet and fun. And uh, there we go. See, we're... See, I could put clothes on her at this point. She could be like an evolved uh, Archaeopteryx. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> right quick, before I lose momentum altogether, I am going to set this to the side because it has paint on it now. Uh, we're going to put more color on this and now I have some decisions to make. So let me see. I'm going to see by sticking my finger on my board. <laughs> Woo! Yes! See? I came away with no paint on my finger, which means, I mean, that's bad to do. You don't want to like rub the acid on your fingers onto your painting. So I'll do that real quick. Um, don't know if that does any good or not, but uh, actually most of these uh, paints and glazes that I use are uh, pH buffered. So acid degradation is less of an issue in, I guess, modern paintings. Uh, you know, we might have other issues with our paint chemistry. Who knows? Uh, we'll find out 500 years from now. And uh, now I'm going to take that yellow hmm, and I am going to put it in a wash. You know, I don't think I want to do a water wash because if there is any way for it to uh, really lift up that paint, it's going to be from water. Water is a really effective acrylic solvent. So is milk, by the way. Go figure. And saliva, interestingly. So I'm going to use a uh, some acrylic uh, just gloss medium and I'm going to use that to do my my wash, which is not really a wash. It is now a glaze. So here we go. I'm going to take that and I'm just, see, I'm just mixing it around in the gloss medium. And uh, let's see, where do I want to start? I think I'm going to start down here. I'm just going to go like this. All right. And this, and now I'm going to wipe it away. Wipe it away. See? And that's going to, uh, oh yeah, I like that. See, it lifted up a little there, but I don't mind that. That actually looks kind of cool, uh, especially with a, a feathery surface. See, it's diversifying the type of mark making that we're doing, which is exciting to me. And we're going to sort of put it on the caps of the feathers. That's not what that is, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All of my bird terminology goes out the window when I'm working on a painting. It's funny. I think my brain can only do one thing at once. Sometimes we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Oh, yeah, that looks cool. 
And yep, we're doing this gonna just a little bit of just added flames, right? And we still want to be able to see through to the textures below, or at least I do. That's that's what I like when you're making like a, a mythical, mystical creature like a phoenix. I tend to want to um, have mythical, mystical mark making. <laughs> so this is what we've got so far. And uh, that looks seriously mythical to me. I'm probably going to sort of trim up the edges a little bit to where I like them because um, accidental texture is great, but at some point during the painting, you want to put uh, some intentional marks on there as well because otherwise it just looks too samey. You want it to look diversey. <laughs> So we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and just sort of ground that. And look at that. I made, I made that portrait pink out of, out of pyrrole red and cad yellow. That's funny. Okay, let's try doing it differently. I'm going to put some space textures, and I'm going to sort of direct that line back around to the planet so that so that I don't know it uh there's been some conflicting studies on whether that um, directing the eye thing really works but uh, it certainly works on artists it's funny uh the research is that all the tricks that we artists use to direct the gaze doesn't necessarily work on uh, random viewers, but it always works on other artists. So, <laughs> so other artists here, here is where I want your gaze to go. All right, I'm gonna try that, gonna try that. Just gonna make some weird sparks and uh, you know again this is about sort of diversifying the type of marks that are on the piece because it makes it uh, more interesting. There we go. Anytime you see a shaky line I'm like oh I meant to do that and you can know oh she's had too much coffee. <laughs> Secrets. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm not going to do too much more on this because this is an art jam piece. This is not like a fully realized book cover piece. <laughs> uh, let's see. I need to put the sort of the, okay, you know what? And this is this is bad of me. I always do this with my fingers whenever I have like sort of a, a place where it needs a super like, bright flash of light. I always use either a, uh, a palette knife or my fingers because it, uh, I don't know, the, the white just comes out with more uh, oomph. That's at least my perception of things. I'm gonna just sort of scooch in a little bit more. Just a little more white. Just I'm gonna I'm gonna dirty it up, you know? I'm gonna mess it up. You can't have like a painting that's like all one thing. I always say that when I see something that's too smooth my teeth start to itch because to me, and maybe this is just like my perception of things, you know, like 
like they thought maybe Monet just had really bad eyes. Uh, to me, the world is not smooth. You know, the world is not all one smooth texture. It's a lot of ridiculous microscopic textures, all sort of superimposed from micro scale to macro scale. And, and I like to reflect that with my art. So I'm going to think, okay, I think, honestly, I think I might be done with this piece. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna, I, I like that eye shape like that, but I think I might put something in it. I've been weirdly obsessed with this phthalo turquoise color lately, so I'm going to uh, mark this as an era in Melissa Gay paintings, the phthalo turquoise era, and sort of do that to the eye. It's just kind of like pew, pew, pew. Look at that. So can you see that? There we go. There we go. And uh, now I'm going to sign it. And sometimes I will just stamp things with a seal chop, but that tends to work better on paper than it does on a um, smooth hardboard like this. So I will just M, pew, pew, M, G. And I usually label them as. 20, 22. I'm using the wrong brush for signing. That's just great. Okay. <laughs> there we go. We're just going to do that, that, and that. And uh, I will put, uh, put Liberty Con. Art Jam. And actually, I'll do that off camera because that's going to be boring to watch and I just messed it up. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, my charity art jam piece for 2022 Liberty Con. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking to you. <laughs>